The right wing isn't just attacking AOC because she's progressive, but because she's a woman and you have to hear her response. It's extraordinary. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. This story is fairly widely known, I think, uh, and, and you probably heard it, but just to recap very quickly, uh, she was walking up the steps of the Capitol building two days ago and uh, Ted Yoho, who is a, a Republican congressman from Florida, uh, made some remarks at her to her, and uh, which she will characterize herself in just a moment. And, uh, and then as he was walking away, he said he called her an effing B word. And she's not taking it. She's not having it. And this speech that she gave on the floor is absolutely extraordinary. Now, now I'm doing the show from home, so it's a real um, it's a real lift for us to play uh, audio direct off the web uh, to you. So I will read to you her speech. We, you know, we're we're slowly here uh, uh, bringing up to speed our technical capabilities. But let me just read this speech to you. Uh, this is on the floor of the House of Representatives. She says, about two days ago, I was walking up the steps of the Capitol and Representative Yoho suddenly turned a corner. He was accompanied by Co Congressman Roger Williams and accosted me on the steps right here in front of our nation's capital. I was minding my own business, walking up the steps, and Representative Yoho put a finger in my face. He called me disgusting. He called me crazy. He called me out of my mind. He called me dangerous. And then he took a few more steps, and after I had recognized his comment as rude, he walked away and said, you're rude? You're call I'm rude? You're calling me rude? I took a few steps ahead and I walked inside and cast my vote because my constituents send me here each and every day to fight for them and to make sure that they're able to keep a roof over their head and that they're able to feed their families and carry on their lives with dignity. I walked back out and there were reporters in front of the camera and right in front of the reporters, Representative Yoho called me and I quote, and she says it, I can't say it on, the, on, on radio or television, an effing B word. And you know, she, she, she says, these are the words that Representative Yoho levied against a congresswoman. And she talks about how she has experienced this on subways. She experienced this when she was, uh, you know, a, 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 a server in restaurants and things and bars. And she goes on to say, this is not new. And that is the problem. Mr. Yoho was not alone. He was walking shoulder to shoulder with Representative Roger Williams. And that's when we start to see that this issue is not about one incident. It is cultural. It is a culture of lack of impunity, of accepting of violence and violent language against women and an entire structure of power that supports that. Because not only have I been spoken to disrespectfully, particularly by members of the Republican Party and elected officials in that Republican Party, not just here, but by the President of the United States last year, he told me to go home to another country with the implication that I don't even belong in America. The governor of Florida, Governor DeSantis, before I was even sworn in, called me a whatever that is. Dehumanizing language. Alexandria, Con Congresswoman, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says, dehumanizing language is not new. And what we are seeing is that incidents like these are happening in a pattern. This is a pattern of an attitude toward women and dehumanization of others. So while I was not deeply hurt or offended by little comments that are made. When I was reflecting on this, I honestly thought I was just going to pack it up and go home. It's just another day, right? But then yesterday, Representative Yoho decided to come on the floor of the House of Representatives and make excuses for his behavior. And that I could not let go. I could not allow my nieces. I could not allow the little girls that I go home to. I could not allow victims of verbal abuse and worse to see that, to see that excuse and to see our Congress accepted as legitimate and accept it as an apology, and to accept silence as a form of acceptance. I could not allow that to stand, which is why I'm raising to make this point of personal privilege. I will not stay up late at night waiting for an apology from a man who has no remorse over calling women and using abusive language toward women. What I do have issue with is using women, our wives and daughters, as shields and excuses for poor behavior. Mr. Yoho mentioned that he has a wife and two daughters. I am two years younger than Mr. Yoho's youngest daughter. I am someone's daughter too. My father, thankfully, is not alive to see how Mr. Yoho treated his daughter. My mother got to see Mr. Yoho's disrespect on the floor of this house towards me on television. 
I am here to show my parents that I am their daughter and that they did not raise me to accept abuse from men. What Mr. Yoho did was give permission to other men to do that to his daughters. In using that language in front of the press, he gave permission to use that language against his wife, his daughters, women in his community, and I am here to stand up and say that is not acceptable. This is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez speaking on the floor of the House of Representatives yesterday. Having a daughter does not make a man decent. Having a wife does not make a decent man. Treating people with dignity and respect makes a decent man. And when a decent man messes up, as we're all bound to do, he tries his best and does apologize. Not to save face, not to win a vote. He apologizes genuinely to repair and acknowledge the harm done so that we can all move on. Lastly, what I want to express to Mr. Yoho is gratitude. I want to thank him for showing the world that you can be a powerful man and still accost women. You can have daughters and accost women without remorse. You can be married and accost women. You can take photos and project that image to the world of being a family man and accost women without remorse and with a sense of impunity. It happens every day in this country. It happened here on the steps of our nation's capital. It happens when individuals who hold the highest office in this land admit to hurting women and use this language against all of us.